What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Bottom of the seventh, two runs already in, the disease lead it eight to seven in a seesaw affair. There oh, oh the my! This one yet. Oh upper my! Deck. The upper deck! Upper deck in left field. That may be the first one I've ever seen in the upper deck. I saw a guy named Bill Pinkert hit something like that, but never modern times. That thing. That thing has to be over 450. First one I've ever seen in the upper deck. There Unbelievable. It is. Boy, does he get all of it. Keep in mind, two strikes, too. Oh, oh. like a breaking ball. Oh, my goodness. Now, there's a single fan out there. Looks like Bob Ewing. Good day or evening to everyone out there in the decoding world. My name is Logan, and this is Decode Your Reality. And today we're going to be getting into some sports. We're going to be decoding the longest recorded home run in professional baseball by this guy right here, Joey Meyer, that played for the Denver Zephyrs, and it was recorded at 582 feet. And by the time I get done with this presentation, folks, I will have supported once again that man is being used and that man's not doing anything in any of these events happening in our lives. They're sure they're acting them out. They're playing out their part. But folks, some of you are still sitting there decoding and blaming organizations like the Masons and Jesuits. You think these people actually have the brains to actually code these games and the outcomes of sports and movies and music? You got to be absolutely out of your freaking mind to think that these people can be doing anything like this. It's too complicated. Man is being used, folks, and you got to get that through your mind, and we're living in a simulation. This is the game called life, and you and I are just playing out our part, and this guy, Joey Meyer, I mean, come on, the longest recorded home run, who do you think's controlling all this kind of stuff? We're living in a simulation, folks, and I'm going to show that at the end of this presentation, and I will support everything that I'm saying. I'm going to back it up with many many layers not just connecting words and numbers and thinking you got it figured out and that may like i said that may piss some of you off some of you that's all you do is just connect words and numbers together and think you got it figured out but you're stuck because that's as far as you go and that needs to stop folks we need to get this right we need to get all this decoding right folks so here we go here is the topics that we're going to be talking about during this presentation in the zero position the intro which is what i'm doing now talking a little bit about this guy and what's going on and how everything's orchestrated not by man number one we're going to be talking about denver because that's where the home run was hit mile high stadium number two the home run fisherman what does fishing got to do with a home run well you're about to find out number three the wizard of Mile High Stadium. Number four, Tanner Joe Meyer. That's his birth name. The guy who hit the home run went by Joey Meyer. Number five, the guy who pitched him the ball, Murphy Smith from the Buffalo Bisons. Number six, the team that Meyer played for, the Zephyrs, what that's all about. Number seven, simulation, what we're living in, a simulation. And number eight, of course, what did you see? What did you see? I love to hear your opinions of what you see during these presentations. So here we go, folks. This is by the Denver Post, this photograph right here. And it was 
really, you know, this is where I started from the Denver Post and decoding. And I don't even remember how I even got started with this. I don't know. I, oh, I know why. Because I was watching a YouTube video of a guy who was creating a longer home run than this. I was absolutely fascinated by it. Someone had sent me a YouTube video on sine and cosine waves. Sheldon, that was you. And in there, which was the measurements of pi, was another video about the lo longest home run. And it was, it led me to this. So I started to investigate it. I used to play baseball in high school. So I had a little bit of interest. But nonetheless, this was the Denver Post issue of this story. And we're going to get back to this in a minute. But, you, you know, there are some things that I obviously can give credit consciously for man to do, right? Obviously, we can't take everything away because people can pick dates to do things on and whatnot. But when you see all these layers, it's just not possible, folks. Man's not smart enough to do this kind of stuff. So we have to rule that out as an option. So it was in front of a crowd of this many people right there. 1,404. So the story goes, it was on June 2nd, 1987, and it was 582 feet in its length. And there's that 144. Let me go back there. It was a crowd of 1,404. And then you see Denver, when you go to the latitude longitude, which is a layer that you can observe from, you should know your birth city of what your latitude longitude, where you live right now. All these are like ley lines on over the earth and there's like the X marks the spot. And you know, folks, it's not a secret that the United States government has an underground city below the airport in Denver. And this is, I'm sure, one of the major reasons why. You see, when you add up 39.7392 north and 104.9903 west, which is the coordinates latitude, longitude of Denver, that's what you're going to get. 144 point dot dot dot, but it's the 144. And it just so happens that this guy blasts his home run in front of 1,404 people. 144. And we're talking, oh, that goes to the biblical 144,000. 144 is tied to Wuhan, the coordinates of Wuhan, where the supposed COVID-19 virus came out of. And if you follow the 144 and the string of pi, it's tied directly to the number of 666. How about that? Shown that with my COVID decodes. So when you say 582 feet, when you speak that spell, look at what you get, folks. And these two main ciphers on the world stage, they speak for themselves. They speak for themselves, folks. What about the elevation of Denver, Colorado and Mile High Stadium where the home run was hit? Look at the elevation, folks. 5,280 feet. And how long was that home run? 582 feet. Now, yeah, of course, man could say, well, we had to match it up to that. I can see consciously man doing something like that. But still, then, then again, I go right back to the voice in your head. That's not even yours. The thoughts that come in your mind, they're not even yours. Look at how many meters is it, it is, folks. 1,600 and 10 meters and of course that is tied to the golden ratio because the golden ratio is 1.61 and you know i mean remember coors beer made in golden colorado it's kind of interesting but there you go 582 tied to the 5280 feet and that's tied to the golden ratio and we're going to be getting into that so this was a big one right here and this ties into theology this story ties directly into religion and theology. How's that even possible? They're not even the same construct when it comes to how man describes them. Sports and religion, they're not even, I mean, while well, some people can really make sports their religion, but they're not even the same. They're a completely different entity. 
But of course, because it's written in the script, it's in the code. This is what we're observing. This is the code, folks. June 2nd, 1987 is when Joey Meyer hit this 582 foot longest verified home run in professional baseball history. And look at what day of the year it is, folks. Day number 100. And 53, and that's tied to this element on the periodic table. Now, if you're new to this, you'd be like, why are you bringing elements in science? Why is that connecting to the numbers? Folks, everything's connected, and these give bridges to us to observe from, and these are tied directly into theology. Because you see, folks, if you study the story of Jesus and him being a fisher of men, which is what this fish is right here, that's the Jesus fish, which is the Vesica Pisces, which is tied to the element tin, which is the merger of worlds and has an atomic weight of 119 or the 911. But it's all tied to us being the goldfish. We're being mined for our gold. I've been saying this over and over. And you know, this story right here, the catch of 153 fish is tied directly into this story of the longest home run hit. Now, some of you, that have been following my research say, well, some of these people are not real and history's fake. And folks, this just happened a couple decades ago. Most of you that are watching this video were alive when this guy hit his home run. This guy's still alive. So is this fake history? I don't think so, folks. So nonetheless, this story of catching the fish, you know, Jesus telling them to cast the nets over the side of the right-hand side of the boat, and then they got 153 large fish. They caught it in the net, and the net wasn't torn. There's so many synchronicities from this story of religion tied into baseball professional sports and here's here's a prime example so 153rd day of the year is june 2nd that's when this guy blasted the longest recorded home run and you'll see you see this element right here has an atomic weight of 153 this is called the gd element and if you just threw an o in there you'd spell out god and you know remember why is this a big important element because in our dna which is just the fish our double helix is right in there, the tree of life and tree of knowledge. We have 64 possible codons in our DNA, folks. So that's why there's 64 squares on the chessboard. 64 numbers of the I Ching, if you follow the human design system, which I hope you know what your type is. But there's the direct tie-in right there, folks. Now, it goes even further, you see, because in this Denver Post issue, you go all the way down, I pulled it out of here, but here it is, and... The archive at Mile High Stadium said that number seven, the seat number seven, was believed to have been struck by the home run that Meyer hit. That was what they put in history. And of course, there's always tandem. There's always the duality. There's the second one. This is number eight, seven and eight. And when you go into the string of pi, you're going to land at number 66, master number 66. But this is what's in the story of this. Longest recorded home run. Seat number seven. Which, of course, when you go into the number empire.com, it's the fourth prime number. And that's the 7447 connection. And when you add 74 and 47, you get 121. That's the all seeing eye tied to antimony, tied to the tetragrammaton, the yod heh vah the ancient Israelite God of the Bible. And we're going to be showing that a lot during this presentation because from all my research, that's what's running the show. That's what's got its hands in every freaking cookie jar down here. And when you go into the string of pi, the number seven, it appears at the 13th decimal digit. And we're going to be getting into that as well, because when you go into the 13, it's tied to gold. 13 is found at the 79th decimal digit, which is why I have the gold there. You're going to be seeing a lot of gold, folks, because we're talking about this goldfish fishing for gold, being mined for our energetic gold. It's like collecting gold coins in a video game. So here's the date. One way you can express it 
saying June 2nd, 1987. Look at what it is. It's a number 44. That's tied to the word gold current. It's right there. It's a direct match in the Chaldean. Now, I added some other ones in here because these are big. 137 is the 33rd prime number. The trigonal, the triangular numbers. There's the 911. You just got to observe it. You got to see it. The squares, we're going to be getting into that, folks. Let me tell you something. This one has become a landmark in my research, and I would encourage you to add it into yours if you're a decoder. If you take 21 and you add it to 53, you're going to get the number 74. It's a mighty big cipher to use, and I got a lot of amazing things coming out. We live in the box. We live in a square, folks. Look at all, all these shapes are squares. The Bible's a square. All books are squares. Your phone's a square. We live in the box. And then, you know, there's that 47, folks. Gold current. That's what we're being mined for. And professional sports is no exception. It's no exception. So this is the other way that you can observe a date. Six slash two or dot do dot do dot two dot 1987. It's a 33. All the numbers added up. If this is how you would do your life, uh, your um, life path in numerology or your soul contract, you add up your entire birthday. It's a master number 33. That's a match of when you say 582 feet. That's how far the ball went. 303 there's that 33 and th folks get it out of your brains 33 is not masonic and jesuit they, they, yeah of course they land on those numbers but that's not what this is all about there's something beyond man has nothing to do with these people and organizations they're being used so now we get into mile high stadium the mile high stadium wizard it's now a different stadium. It's called Empower, I believe. But this is the stadium that Joey Meyer hit it out of, 582 feet. Look at the address. The subtleties, of course, 26 letters. And that's tied to the yod heh vah -Heh in the original Hebrew spelling. It's got a total numerology of 157, which is the 37th prime number. And that's tied to this card right here, which I've been showing how accurate this is. I don't know why more people are not including this in the decodes of what they're doing. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Some of you that are, congratulations. And I'm, I'm so excited to see some of you. But some of you just use a numerology or dramatria. God, and that's all you use. It's unbelievable. That's, like I said, it's going to piss some of you off. You're not going to like me. I don't really care. I don't care. I'm trying to figure it out. But... There's the Jack Diamonds card, card 37. This is the birth card of the United States of America. This is the July 4th card amongst many other birthdays. But it's card 37. It's tied to this 157. And this is just a higher form of the 57. 57 is tied to the Truman Show. James Eugene Carey, the guy who played Truman Burbank in the Truman Show, his name equals 57. So one, just 157, the one just means the leader of the 57. It's all tied together, folks. That's how you read these numbers. So here's the wizard, folks. So because when we get into the address, 2755, and I'm fine. This may be new for you, but if you take the numbers and you break them in half separate them and you use the periodic table to do some alchemy you're going to find some great significant pieces to your decoding and that for this particular uh address 2755 it's cobalt and cesium when you add them up using the trusty calculator the number you get is the 191 which is tied to this element right here which is the wizard of oz osmium the wizard of mile high stadium tied to the address and of course let's not forget 17 is the yod heh vah -Heh. because when you go to and you type in yod heh vah -Heh, there it is the 17 i don't care if you want to use the w there it is the w it's the same outcome 17 there's our codons in our dna then if you type out gold there it is 17 if you type out fish there it is 17 
Folks, we're being mined for our gold. You need to get that through your mind. That's just the way it works. So here is the introduction of the square cipher and the breakdown of Mile High Stadium. And that's why I'm saying, folks, that you should be including this in your decode, decoding now because I'm telling you the square cipher has so much magnificence to it. And I'm sorry that I didn't include it in many years ago because I would have been way ahead of the game. But nonetheless, Mile High Stadium, 2146. When you bring that into the string of pi, it occupies four digits, 650 through 653. It ends at the 653 mark. Look at what number that is tied to, folks. It's the 119th prime number. The 119th prime number. And when I go back to the Wizard of Oz, there's the 119. It's just in a different configuration. So I know that this has merit doing it this way. I already know it does. I have so many other slides I could show you to support what I'm saying. Because you know, folks, I'm telling you, you know I'm not here just to th push my opinion. I support my research. I don't just like to spew my opinion. And most people's opinions are just regurgitated anyway. They're not, they don't even use their own line of thinking. It's incredible. Here's another way you can decode reality. And I'm finding massive 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 pieces to this whole puzzle and that is doing square roots and maybe you've never used this since high school maybe you sucked at math but it's the square root folks of these numbers and, and what is the square root it's just two times two equals four that's the square root of two and so you know 130 because we're now going to get into joey meyer And we're going to get into his birthday. And the 130. Why the 130? Because you see, folks, this guy was born on May 10th. And, you know, when I, whoops, when I um, go, to, go here, and this is where, you know, you have some great significance in finding out what day people were born on. Well, there's Joey Meyer, the guy who hit the longest recorded home run in professional baseball. He was born on the 130th day of the year, which is tied to Xenon, the stranger, the voice in your head. But folks, it appears at the 744th decimal, 744, 745, 746. But it starts at the 744th decimal digit. And when you do the square root, of 744, look at what you get. 27.27 times 27.27. It's gonna give you 744. What is 27.27? Why am I showing 27? What's, so, what's the big deal about 27? Because folks, I've been saying that 27 is gold currency. It's gold current, here it is. I'm doing this live for you folks. Here it is, gold current Whoop. there is the 27 you see it right there 27 is current if you don't like current then we're going to do currency and there you go currency is 27 current is 27 and this guy has a double 27 to make up the square root of where his birthday appears in the string of pi are you freaking kidding me? And you telling me man's doing all this kind of stuff? Man's not doing anything. Man is being used for the gold currency. And this story, what this event that happened, it's being collected as gold. The energy is being collected as gold. Think about it, folks. If you were the divine that created this world and you wanted to come here and experience this life, wouldn't you want to be the one to hit the longest home run and experience that in human form? I know I would. Here's the alchemology of Tanner Joe Meyer. This was his birth name. So what is alchemology? Well, it's what, what I've discovered. It's when you take numerology and then you include 
alchemy into it. So you take you and you should do this with your name, your full birth name. You should be doing this. And you taking Tanner Joe Meyer, which is a 14 letter word the subtleties, folks, God equals 14. I mean, it's just, it just gets ridiculous at, at, at some point when you it just gets, it's just, it's ridiculous. Some of these things. So Tanner Joe Meyer, the 14 letters, there they are. And then the letter, the numbers that correspond to those letters, those get matched up with the periodic table and the elements. So Tanner, for example, is 415552. So that would be these elements right here, beryllium, hydrogen, boron, three times and helium matching that 415552. And then here's his middle name, Joe, and then his last name, Meyer. And then we go over to the trusty calculator. Of course, I couldn't fit them all there. But you can fact check this, but the hair, this is his outcome of his freaking alchemology, folks. 109.111. And I will, will remind you, the 109 is the 29th prime number, which is tied to Yaldabaoth, the Gnostic Demiurge. See, it's the same thing, folks. Yaldabaoth, yod heh vah Yahweh, it's all the same. And the guy's got the 111 behind there on the feminine side. When you add up 109 and 111, you're going to get the number 220. And look at where 220 is found in the string of pi. Right back to the Wizard of Oz again, folks. Right back to it. Matching the address, the 2755 of Mile High Stadium, where this guy hit his home run. Now, I, this, I highlighted this because this is the symbol for the Zephyrs, the team that he played for, Denver Zephyrs. And we're talking about the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. Do you see, folks, how there's no way man could be doing this? Do you know how insane I would sound to say, yeah, man's, they, you know, Channard Meyer, he's going to hit the home run and, you know, his name's going to appear in the string of pie linked to the Wizard of Oz and we got to match it. He's got to play for the Zephyrs. He's got to be on that team. He's got to hit it at Mile High Stadium because it's got to be matched to the Wizard of Oz in the address. And do you know how insane that sounds, folks? I mean, lock me up and throw me away, man. Or lock, lock me up and throw away the key. <laughs> lock me up and throw me away. But uh, did you see how insane that sounds, folks? We need to be more responsible with what we're pushing as far as what's going on with this code. Because the man's not doing it. Let's break him down even more. He was born on May 10th. That can be also observed as 510. May is the 5th month. 510. Look at where that appears in the string of pi. It starts at the 48th decimal digit. It occupies three spaces, 48, 49, and 50. And if you get out your calculators and add that up, you're going to get the number 147. And that's the prime number for the number 853. Folks, do you realize how big this is? 850 there's the the I am is right in there 853 can also be read as 88 tied to raw tied to the back to the future time travel tied to the Christ and perhaps the biggest one of them all is it's tied to the 101 and perhaps the hole we all fell down in to get down here in this game that's for a different story. So then we bring in the square. You, folks, I'm going to suggest, you know, if you haven't done your name with the square cipher, you should. You should. And this is how you would do it. Tanner Joe Meyer, 2660. I mean, the subtleties, folks, 26. There's the yod. 26. yod heh vah is 26 in the original Hebrew spelling. 26 is iron. We have iron in our blood, essential for our blood. You'll die without it. You, anemia is a huge deal. You need iron. Makes our blood red. But it's these two elements. 
from this guy's name through the square cipher. We're living in the box, folks. And when you add up iron and neodymium, neodymium is highly magnetic. They use it to make magnets. It's magnetic iron. Magnetic iron. That's how you would interpret this. Going over to the trusty calculator here to the right, doing the alchemy of iron and neodymium. Look at what number you get. 197.843. Well, that's tied to this element right here. Gold. Of course it's going to be tied to gold. Because this event had gold currency attached to it. It had a hell of a lot of it. Because it's on record as the longest home run in professional baseball. And it's tied to gold. This guy's tied to gold through this square cipher. So now we get into the cards, folks. Because they're going to tell their story as well. And I've shown how accurate these cards are. 52 cards, 52 weeks, four suits, four seasons. I, I, it's like beating a dead horse keeps tell, telling you the same things. Most of you should know that by now. The May 10th card matching that of Joey Meyer's birth is the Nine Diamonds card. It's card number 35 in the deck. And let me show you that, folks. Here it is. Here is the lineage of the cards. The na if you want these graphics, just send me an email and I'll send them to you. It's decodeyourreality at gmail.com. And I'll send them to you. But here they all, all, all numbered. Hearts is first. Clubs is second. Diamonds is third. Spades is last. Fire, air, water, earth. That's how these go. And here is Myers' birth card right here. The nine diamonds, card number 35. So naturally, you'd want to go look at C, where or what element is linked to the 35. It's bromine. And look at what the atomic weight or atomic mass measured in a laboratory is for bromine. 79. And of course, what's that tied to? gold it's tied to gold folks so clearly you can see man's not doing anything they're being used folks for the to write the code and play out the script and the energy that you give off you're being mined for it that's why the story of the anunnaki being, you know, they, they, they sent, made humans to mine gold. It's not physical gold. It's, it's energetic gold. But this is no exception, folks. I mean, the subtleties that most people never look at with these cards. Here's four. Here's four. That's 44. That's gold currency going down into the hole. What about the pitcher? Who threw him the ball? Got to bring this guy in because, you know, he wouldn't have hit the home run without this dude. Murphy Smith. It's just fascinating with just the way everything's lining up. Man, folks, we're headed to a reset at, because we're, we're all the great decoders out there. All, you should see the ages of all these people that we're decoding. It's just, we're, we're, at, we're at the end of a reset, man. Change is coming, folks. It's coming. So be ready. This guy's 33 years old right now. He was born on August 25th. 25 is, of course, pretty heavy in the decoding world when you do that because look at the Chaldean on the right there. That's tied to black sun. That's tied to the word adversary, of course. 25 is tied to magnesium, which is magnetic. And this guy was born on August 25th. Here is his card right here. The ace clubs card, which of course is, you know, the aces are the first card in the lineage of the deck or the suit, I mean. So it's the 14th card. It's the 14th card in the deck, but, you know, the aces are typically the first card. But, I mean, are you kidding me, 14? You know, you go back to the cipher here and... Again, keep your eye on that Chaldean. 
And I mean, there it is. It's just, it's just crazy because you, you not only have it here, the Ford team, but then you have the Yodhe Vahe right there. Then you have Yaldabaoth right there. But, but Ford team, it's like God pitched to himself. And it's tied to this element right here, silicon. You know, like Silicon Valley, where they make all the tech stuff, computer stuff, because we're living in a simulation. Look at the atomic weight of silicon, 27.977. Look at what it's tied to in numerology, folks. Currency. Keeping that gold currency going. Gold current. So when you bring those two cards together, here's the pitcher and the, the batter. It's Murphy Smith and Joey Meyer combining to produce on the world stage the longest recorded home run in professional baseball history at 582 feet. And when you do the alchemy of their two elements related to their birth cards, silicon and gold, and you go over to the trusty calculator and you add them up, look at what you get. 107.8. Eight eight one, and of course it's tied to yet again currency currency I mean if you just observe these two numbers gold currency because you see gold is 79 currency is 27 gold currency based off of these guys' birth cards and you want to tell me that man's doing this are you out of your mind man's not doing it folks something is controlling our reality outside of the physical here's the day that this event happened june 2nd And that's the two spades card. And there's Yod Hevahe in the original Hebrew spelling, it's 26. And then, you know, you go back to here and it's 26. It's that word right there. I mean, if you go further, folks, it's this is the 41st card in the deck, the two spades. Let me digress and show you. Here it is. Two spades, card number 41. Which, you know, some of you know it's... Where am I going? Here we go. It's also tied to neobimium. But here is the tie-ins for all this, folks. You see, 41 tied to the two spades card is tied to the 13 because 41 is the 13th prime number. Follow me along on this, folks. Here's the card tied to the day that Meyer hit the home run. June 2nd, two spades, card 41. 41 in numberempire.com is the 13th prime number. Then when you go into the string of pi, because this is all connected, look at what number appears at the 13th decimal digit of pi. It's the number 79. It's once again gold. It's gold again. The day was gold. Joey Meyer is gold. The pitcher he threw, the, 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 the Murphy Smith was the currency for the gold. And I mean, just this is, these are the two elements. I mean, you have the Yodhe Vahi, iron. The 26 tied to aluminum, the 13. There's the 26, you see it? Tied to the 26 protons and iron. These are the two elements that make up that part right there. 13 and 26. So here it is, 13, 26. I mean, they're all in bed together. And I'm not even trying to freaking fit a square peg in a round hole. I'm not stretching anything with all this. Let's break down these two guys together, shall we? Here's the timestamp. <laughs> 
There's the timestamp of, it just gets funny now. I just, I'm having a good time with this. Here's the timestamp of Murphy and Meyer. And, you know, keep in mind that both, <laughs> both their last names start with, the, I mean, in, in numerology, you have what's called the capstone. And that is the first letter of our, our names. It's kind of, it directs the ship. I mean, it's kind of the main letter in your, in your name is the first letter. And both of these start with the letter M. And what's the letter M in the English alphabet? It's the 13th element, which is tied to this. It's just, it's just the subtleties. I didn't any, I just caught that right now, but it's just, it's just so funny now. And all you can do is laugh because this is the code express, expressing itself. And it wants to be found. I'm telling you, it wants to be found because it wants to say, here I am. Wants the credit. Man, you can't give man the credit. Man could never orchestrate this. Look at the timestamp of these two guys in their birth. May 10th, 1962 is when Meyer was born. And then Murphy was August 25th, 1987. Look at the subtleties. 303 months in between. Just a 303. Remember, 582 feet was 303. But it's a span of 9,239 days. Look at what number it's tied to. The 1,145th prime number is the timestamp. That's the 119, folks. Again, the 119. But man's doing this, though. I know. I mean, how crazy of me to think that... You know, there's something outside of us that's controlling the shots. Very foolish and irresponsible of me to think that. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. But anyway, when you get into their hats, the subtleties again, folks, right? The, the, the Buffalo Bisons has the B on there. This is the logo. Here are the Zephyrs, the Z. I showed that. Wizard of Oz. Here they are. The B is the second Letter in the English alphabet, Z is the 26. You bring those together, you get this number right here, this element, which I've already shown the 88 in a few times during this presentation. You, sh you should know how big this 88 is, folks. And this is tied to ancient Egypt now and the Egyptian sol solar deity, Ra, which is tied into all this. It's all the same thing. <laughs> this is part of the story in the script. So then you take their, you know, their birthdays, May 10th and August 25th, 25 and 10. Then you bring in the elements of the periodic table. Of course, you know, I'm going to bring those in. Support my opinion. Here it is. Manganese, which is highly magnetic. And then you got neon. There's the battery with 19. And then you do the alchemy of those two. Look, I mean, are you kidding me, folks? <laughs> it's just, it's funny to me now. I, I just chuckle and laugh. When I find these things, tumorous to me, but is there, there's that 74 and there's, you know, there's Saturn right there staring in the face, you know, 74 and 93. And if you really want to get technical folks, these add up to 167, that's tied to the tetragrammaton and the 68th element erbium. But that's, you know, I want I could have added so much more in folks, but it just gets ridiculous and monotonous. Here are the two guys' names that they went by in the world of baseball. If you go read that story, Mike Murphy, Joey Meyer, and uh, you know, it's the yin yang. <laughs> it's just, it's just funny. <laughs> this one was pretty awesome right here. This is the, their actual birth names. Their real birth names on their birth certificates. Murphy Smith, Tanner Joe Meyer, it's the number 95, and I've shown this so many times. This is the key to the universe that Nikola Tesla was talking about, the 369, because when you add up, uh, when you add up these two elements, you're going to get 369 when you do the alchemy. But this is the I am, the I am that I am. Yeah, the I am. That's why you say, I am this, I am that. But they add up to the 95, one half of the I am. So then we get into the last topic besides the simulation, but the Zephyrs, the team that Joey Meyer played for. This is important because whatever created this reality decided it wanted to use this team and that guy to hit the longest recorded home run. And it, of course, it started with the letter Z, the tw 
What is Z, the 26th letter in the English alphabet? Once again, tied to the yod heh the word God. <laughs> so we bring the square again into this. I show, I'm, I'm telling you folks, this one has massive accuracy. I'm just beginning to use it, but man, it's, it's fun to use. But here it is, 23 and 31, you break that apart. It's vanadium and gallium. Going over to our trusty calculator, do the alchemy of those two elements, and look at what you get, folks. Yet again, another 119. So where did their name come from? Well, I did some research, and this is what I found. It came from a train, the Denver Zephyr. <laughs> And the big takeaway for this was the route that it took when it was in operation. It started in Chicago, it ended in Colorado Springs, and look at the distance that it traveled. Oh, just the 119 again. See folks, that's why I'm saying if you think man is doing this, you gotta put yourself in check because man's not doing anything, folks. <laughs> this, is a, this is a script we're all playing out. So have fun with it. Doesn't mean you just hang it up and call it a day. So this is the other way that you can break down the squares. And I would encourage you to do that with your name when you do your full birth name. So Zephyrs, of course, is a 2331. But when you reduce these down, these are the numbers you're going to get. 1741491 that's breaking these numbers down right there when you reduce them and of course when you add them up using the trusty calculator look at what number you get currency gold currency <laughs> And so this is the breakdown of Zephyrs when you do the alchemology of it. The seven letter word that it is, seven letters, the ball landed in seat number seven. Zephyrs is a 31, that's pi. Pi is 3.14, but 3.1 is its most balanced, and there it is, it's pi. Down the rabbit hole we go. Infinite potential. And here are the seven elements matching the seven letters and their numbers. And when we go over to the trusty calculator and we add them up, we get the number 64. Which is why I have a big picture of the double helix. This is 64, folks. 64 possible codons in our DNA, which is why Jesus was a fisher of men, because... How many fish did they catch? They caught 153. But of course they did because it's tied to the GD element. That's why the Masons use the 64 with their checkerboard floor in their lodges. Because it's all tied to our codones and our DNA, folks. There's nothing satanic about it. There's nothing devilish about it. It's just the way the script's written in the software called life. That's the way it works. And if you want to get really technical, 64 plus 43 is 107, which is tied to the 28, which is tied to the 57, tied to the 33. So last but not least, I think this is, yeah, this is my last one for the Zephyrs, and that's the letter Z, of course. It's the 26th letter in the English alphabet, of course, tied to the ancient Israelite God of the Old Testament. The yod heh vah -Heh. 20, so this is the original, so I didn't alter this, this is the original four letters and of course remember Yoda, if the four letters is called the tetra grammaton tetra meaning four tetra meaning box box meaning square square meaning cube it's tied to the mecca in saudi arabia that big black square they have in the middle of saudi arabia 
That's tied to the yod heh vah -He. It's tied to the Judaism religion because they wear the square on their head. Now, listen, folks, I'm just calling it like it is. I'm not trying to put anything down. I have no anti-nothing. But this energy, whatever this code is that wrote all this script, it, it runs everything. It's got its hands in all the cookie jars. And I mean, there it is, 26, 26, 26. This is, a, what, this is the logo on the freaking hat. And the guy, when you watch the beginning of this, I played the clip of him smashing that home run. I mean, he freaking clobbered the ball. But as he's walking around the bases, I noticed he's wearing the number zero on his jersey. And when you say out zero, look at what number you get, folks. You see, because everything comes from the zero, which is pi, which is the void, the black. And it's tied to the fish story and the Christ and the religion and theology. It's all tied together. There's no separation. So that brings me into the topic right here, folks. And this is off of MLB. This is a video game you're watching. And it looks, I mean, when I played video games, folks, the, the graphics were not even close to being this good. Folks, this is how good technology has gotten, where it looks close to being real. So the reason why I threw this in there, folks, is it too far-fetched to believe that we're living in a simulation and something's controlling us? Why is that so hard for people to, to, to take in and, and ponder at least and think about it? Because you see, these characters that are playing this game are being controlled by somebody with a remote control. Pressing the buttons, making them do things. Oh, I'm going to have him run over here. Oh, I'm going to have him swing the bat. Oh, I'm going to have him throw the fastball. No, I want him to throw the change up this time. So how, why would it be so far-fetched to think that man's being used by something remotely outside of us, making us throw certain balls, making us swing at certain pitches, making us do certain things, making us write certain books, play certain songs, make certain movies, Folks, there's so much truth in a lot of the things that we see and a lot of people are waking up to it because I have a feeling this is what it's all leading to, folks. Which is, you know, that movie Ready Player One came out. I mean, <laughs> folks, we're, mo we're moving into machine. We are a machine. And man is being used. So what is it that you saw during this presentation. What did you see? I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. Even if, you know, I'm going to get some thumbs down. That's totally cool. Go ahead and smash that thumbs down button. I don't really care. That's just energy. I'll take it. But what is it that you saw, folks? I mean, I got some haters out there because, you know, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't even know why, but it's totally fine with me. Like Grant Cardone said, he says, if nobody hates you, no one knows you. It's energy, folks. It's energy. I'm just searching after the truth. I know my place. I know my code. I know my blueprint. I know why I'm here. This is part of what, why I'm here. You're seeing it. And again, these are my opinions and truths. I list it right in the beginning of each video. It's up to you to decide what you want to believe. But clearly, you can see that man's not doing anything when it comes to these big events like this. The movies I'm decoding, I got an upcoming one on Led Zeppelin decoded. Oh, wait, wait till you see that one. I've decoded Pink Floyd three times. I've shown it over and over and over again that these people are being used. And there, and folks, and for those of you that say that history is fake, as folks, I'm 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 decoding things that are happening right now and showing the same patterns. So your theory of saying a history is a lie, it goes right out the window. And I get really passionate about this.
because I know this is my destiny. I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing amongst other things. And I would love to join in with other people of like minds that we can all come. I mean, there, and there are some of us that are coming together that are, you know, sharing our knowledge and wisdom, which is great because, you know, we got to figure this out. That's the whole thing in the game is, is the, the game of life's figuring it out. That's the fun part. And then, of course, keep, it out, keep going out there and living your life. Whether you're being used or not, you don't know you're being used. And even though I can't prove it, great. So go live your life. Go find your code. Know your blueprint. Know why you're here. Some, most, most people I see out there have no idea why they're here living their life. They have no freaking idea. So anyway, thanks for listening to my rant. <laughs> And I'd love to hear what you saw during this presentation. I got so much more great content coming out, especially my upcoming prison plan at Decode, which I know a lot of you have been waiting on. Oh man, it's just so much with this one coming out. But anyway, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decode Your Reality. And I greatly appreciate each and every one of you for watching.